distintas sí, cosas. Sí. Algo para, sobre cómo comenzamos porque, a decir lo que ya. Hello, my name is Sebastián Gallero. I've been a long time collaborator of Humberto and Jimena. I've been witnessing the development of cultural biology for many years. I've been there in many of the heated <laughs> conversations and also the discussions that have given birth to many amazing documents. Um, yes, oh, and I see people from Oregon, from France, uh, from Corvallis, from different places. So I introduce myself and now I have the pleasure to introduce as well our dear and beloved friend, Dennis Sando, straight from Eugene, Oregon, uh, who is also accompanying, me, accompanying us in this occasion. And our beloved and always interesting to listen, Dr. Humberto Maturana from Santiago, Chile. And along with him is also accompanying us Jimena Davila, co-founder of Matristica, who is in the beautiful journey of getting into English speaking, but as a co-creator of all of these distinctions that we will be sharing today, she also wanted to send you a message. So I will transform the way in which I'm inhabiting this place and I will quiet down all my thoughts and idea and I will become a vessel to bring you Jimena's message from Spanish to English. Así que, Jimena, el escenario es tuyo. Oh, hello. Hola. Uh, <laughs> my name is Jimena Dávila. I'm co-founder to Matristica uh, with uh, Humberto Maturana. Uh, 20, um, 20 años? 20, 20 years. years. Uh, oh. um, los quiero felicitar a todos nosotros. I would like to congratulate all of us. Quiero felicitar a la tecnología también que hace posible esto. And I would also like to congratulate technology that makes this possible. Porque podemos generar este espacio de conversación tan necesario. Because we can generate this so necessary space of conversation. Um, en los momentos que estamos viviendo hoy día en particular in the moments in which we are living today particularly en que nos golpea a la cara in which we're being struck to our face lo importante necesario y fundamental que es la unión humana the how important and necessary it is to have human union the union of people. Yo siento que el coronavirus I feel that coronavirus um, como lo dice la palabra corona how the word corona is saying and referring to a mostrarnos it, it is coming to show us que si no uh, nos unimos como seres humanos that if we do not come together as human beings, y que si seguimos fragmentados, and that if we continue fragmented, cada uno en su, cuidando su, su localidad, each one of us taking care of our own locality, y no nos reconocemos en los otros como, como, como hermanos, and we do not recognize other people as our brothers and sisters. Una pandemia. A pandemia. Con, pandem con un virus que, que no, tú no puedes ver. With a virus that we cannot see. Porque no son seres vivos. Because they are not living beings. Puede hacer que la raza humana desaparezca. Could make humankind Uh, our species to go away, to disappear. O sea, somos una brisna de polvo o de arena, como decía Carl Sagan, en el universo. We are little tiny particles of dust, as Carl Sagan used to say, here in the universe. Y somos tan arrogantes. 
And sometimes we are so arrogant or cocky. Con un ego tan grande. With a, such a huge ego sometimes. Que nos está invitando lo que estamos viviendo la humildad. That what we are experiencing is inviting us to uh, humildad is to be humbleness. So to humbleness. Y precisamente es lo que en biología cultural hacemos desde esa humildad. And that is precisely what we invite from cultural biology, from that humbleness. A encontrarnos. To encounter. Para que juntos. To encounter and to meet so that with our, each other's support. Hagamos algo que solo los seres humanos saben hacer. We can do something that only human beings know how to do. Yes, reflexionar. Which is to reflect. ¿Qué queremos conservar en nuestro vivir? About what do we want to conserve in our living? En nuestro convivir. In our living together. ¿Qué mundo queremos para las generaciones que están naciendo y que ya están aquí nuestros niños y niñas? And to reflect about what do we want to leave to the generations that are now growing up and the generations that are to come. Así que a todos le doy la bienvenida. So to all of you, I welcome you. Este es un espacio sagrado de reflexión. This is a sacred space of reflection. Donde la espiritualidad no está fuera de este espacio. Where spirituality is not a way of here, it's present as well. Porque la espiritualidad es una expansión de conciencia. Because spirituality appears as an expansion or enhancement of awareness. De pertenencia. Of belonging. A un ámbito más amplio. And of belonging to a broader domain. Así que. Namaste. So. <laughs> namaste. Bienvenidos. Welcome. Que lo pasen muy bien junto a Dennis, junto a Seba, junto al doctor. And I hope that you have a really nice time with uh, Dennis, Humberto, and Sebastian. My English is very spontaneous. <laughs> It's not uh, perfect, but I understand the emotion. But uh, uh, no necesito muchas veces el, 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 el lenguaje de, del habla. Oh, and sometimes she doesn't need the, the language of the of speech. Porque a veces me basta con sentir y ver la emoción para saber dónde estamos y dónde está el otro y yo misma. Because sometimes it's just necessary with feeling and seeing other people's emotion to know where we are in a conversation. Así que un beso so, grande. A big kiss. Cuando <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, so her English is as spontaneous as a Brownian particle movement. <laughs> okay, so now I wanted to leave you in this space with our dear friend Dennis so he can make his uh, introduction or to share with us his feelings and then invite the doc to a beautiful reflection about this understanding that is bringing us together. Dennis? Thank you, Sebe. Himena, thank you. And um, I, I thought about the first day that I met Himena, and what she said is exactly true. I have no Spanish, and it, when I met her, it seemed like we were communicating with great, great ease. And often I would think back and think, well, who is speaking English and who is speaking Spanish? And I did, I couldn't tell. She just flowed right into a conversation that moved me really deeply. So it's so wonderful to, to see him in and to be with everyone. Uh, I'm a you know, little um, shy about so many friends being here. Um, but I'm really, really happy uh, that we're doing this. This is uh, something that's become 
even more important to me as, as times have changed for us. And I, I guess this is uh, something that I wanted to share with everyone because I think we're all experiencing it. Uh, uh, this week, we, at least in, in Eugene and in Lane County, where I live in Oregon, we've had our lives disrupted in a very particular way. And I think this is true for everyone. Three weeks ago, we were doing things together with our friends and our neighbors and our family. And we didn't even think about it. We just were going to, uh, to gardens, to grocery stores, to sporting events. And it, these were regular happenings in our life. And now, uh, because we're following what health professionals are telling us we need to do, we've become less social. My sweetheart Anastasia doesn't see her girlfriends with the regularity that she used to. Um, I don't go to see my grandson play sports um, at all. Uh, things that were very uh, important to him, uh, like playing in a championship basketball game, were suddenly disappearing all around him. And so here we are in a very strange place. And what, what it feels like to me is I've never realized the importance of our social nature as I feel it now. It's become even clear to us that the things that we used to take um, advantage of in our family, in our daily living, um, you know, seeing the same people in the mornings, having coffees, uh, visiting with, uh, with neighbors, has all been disrupted. And at the same time, here's this beautiful gift from Matristica, this wonderful, wonderful opportunity to deepen our understanding of who we are, but not as the theory, who we really are now. And it feels to me like Matristica has been preparing all of us for this unique time we're living in through the creation of cultural biology. And here's where I'd like to turn to um, my wonderful friend, uh, the doctor. There's been so much um, said about the work of Matristica, Jimena, yourself, doctor, that I wondered if you could reflect on these times we're living in with the coronavirus and cultural biology. Hmm. I was, uh, while you were speaking, uh, I was thinking about what, what do we mean by social? We are social beings. Uh, bees are social beings. Ants are social beings. Uh, what is this being social? And if we uh, look at this from the biological perspective, what we see is that social animals coordinate the living together. It's, uh, sociality is a living together coordinated around living together. In itself, is interesting uh, because uh, it's like a, a recursive thing. 
and uh, if uh, we ask ourselves how 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 do we coordinate in our living together we find that uh, has to do with our movements with gestures and with what happens to us intimately. Um, for example, we encounter somebody else and we sometimes say, what happens to you? And this question, what happens to you, refers to what is occurring inside you such that I see you and by seeing you and your behavior, I'm wondering about what is happening inside you. Uh, are you afraid? Uh, are you curious? Uh, are you happy? So our inner dynamic as bodyhoods of our biology is involved. And uh, if we examine uh, the social same insects, it's the same. Uh, they are, there is an internal dynamic that results in that they have a particular kind of behavior. In the case of bees, uh, the collection of uh, nectar, uh, or the making the the cell, the, the place where they will put the, the nectar that they have collected, or they will take care of the larva of the, of the little ones that are growing. And uh, what we discover if we look at this is that their, their internal dynamic is changed in one case or another the way they react to the circumstance is different. And uh, the movements are different, the circumstances in which they act are different, and so the doing things together entails changes in our inner structure. In fact, if we were to, if we were to make a measurement about uh, our breath, breathing, our heart, our muscles, all these are changing in a different way according to what we're doing together. Yes, according to what we do, but if we're doing together, it's the togetherness that modulates these internal dynamics. Now, how this togetherness takes place? Well, in the social insects, for example, in bees, this togetherness is realized through sharing food. Better, not so much to sharing food, although it is an act of sharing food, actually, you see the, the bees or the ants passing to each other food and the food is with saliva and the saliva is something different from the food is something produced by the organism so they pass to each other food with saliva and the saliva contains hormones molecules of very different kind that have to do with the, with the physiology And they, for, for in the case of insects, there is a name for the, this process. Right? The name is uh, tropholaxis. Tropholaxis. Trophol refers to food and laxis to flow. They coordinate their doings through this flow of food, which is indeed a flow of hormones, a flow 
um, neuropeptides the flow of all kinds of molecules that go with saliva and that participate in the realization of the bodyhood, the physiological, the body dynamic of the insect. So this living together socially is a way of doing things together, transforming ourselves in the doing the things together, which in the insects through, goes through sharing food. In the case of the ants and the bees, but what do we share when we do things together? With Jimena, Emma, we have invented a word which is logo laxis. In the case of insect, is trophy laxis. The flow of food in us, we call it logo, logos, ideas, present laxis, the flow of the logos. And the flow of the logos goes through the language. And uh, yes, we, we know that we use, we use one word or one sentence, the other person turns in one way or another, or we ourselves transform inside. So we're transforming each other with the logos. We coordinate through this internal transformation what we do through the logos. Uh -huh. So the logos is not trivial. I mean, we, whatever we are talking here <clears throat> has resulted in that we are coordinating our doings. This coordination of our doings entails a coordination of the changes that go inside us in our physiology, in our biology. And those changes are indeed uh, structural changes, changes in muscle tension, in the flow of blood and hormones. It's a continuous transformation coordinated through the logos. Mm -hmm. yes. Doctor, if I can jump in, so bold that I'm at this time of crisis, I, I would also wanted to, to add that it, it, it's really interesting what you're mentioning about, yes, we transform ourselves with others through logolaxis. Also, we take care of the trophos part because we need to keep our arthropoiesis, arthropoiesis molecular arthropoiesis flowing. Uh, but something really important that also we human beings do is that we can choose what to do. We can choose uh, something that we hear as a proposal A or as a proposal B. We have the capacity to reflect and to make conscious decisions. And I find that it's really interesting how when we ask ourselves about these fundaments, about this basis, and we also ask ourselves for the fundaments from which other people talk to us, we have this amazing capacity of reflecting and choosing the orientation that our living will take. So in that sense, we transform ourselves by the ideas we share with others, but if we reflect, we have the capacity to choose one path or the other. And that reminds me, doctor, like the experiences you had as a scientist, whenever you found yourself in the need of, cho of choosing one path or the other, like for example, the quest of objectivity or external reality, there was a moment in which by your experiences and conversations, you made a decision of following one path or the other. Yes, yes, an interesting point is that uh, Insects also choose. Uh -huh. But what we do is that we choose our choosing. And it's, it's a little difference. 
because they just have the insect or the bees going in that way and finding something. And according to potentiality, they are being is activating in them. They may go one way or another. So there is an unconscious choice. Yes, like for example, little birds, when they peck on the ground, they raise their, their head, they look, they continue moving and back a little more. Yes. What we, but what we do and we do not know, and I think it's, it's not much that is done in, in insects, is that we choose our choosing. We coordinate our coordination on what we choose. Yes, and that is reflection. The act of reflection is the act of choosing one's choice. Do I like what I like? <laughs> Do I like that which I have said that I like? That's a reflection on that. You can say, oh, I like this. You are choosing. But sometimes, you say, oh, well, do I like this? Do I like my liking this? Am I choosing my choice? Hmm? Well, that is peculiar to us. Now, what I want to, I, it's good that you bring this force now, because it's essential. It is uh, with the logos, we can do this this recursion. We can, <clears throat> it, if we coordinate with food, it is not the same, you see, how do we coordinate with our coordination in a manner which is comparable to our reflection? It's not easy, but in us, this, uh, there is, a, not that there is an abstraction, the abstraction is the result of the reflection. But this possibility of choosing our choice, which is made possible through the global axis. But all that entails changes in our physiology. We can think about ourselves making a choice and then thinking, well, no, I don't really want this would have choose, choose, uh, choose. And you can feel your physiology. You can feel that you are different. Language is a way of coordinating our feelings and our doings. And eventually everything goes through the coordinations of doings. Yes, and in that sense, Doc, we have known this for so long that we have this expression, oh, I have like a little splinter that is bothering me, this situation. Or exactly. when we do an action that we needed to do, we say, I got a huge weight out of my shoulders. Yes. So we are intrinsically cultural biological. We're what? Intrinsically cultural yeah. biological. But intrinsically so. And uh, language is not a domain of abstractions. It's a domain of coordinations of coordinations of coordinations. And the abstraction appears in the recursion of the coordination. But to realize that language has to do with coordinations of doing. Coordination of feelings will re result in coordinations of doing. Coordinations to do or not to do, but it's coordination of doing. And sometimes we, we confuse language with uh, the notion of, uh, with notions, hmm? with abstractions. And we do not realize that it's a flow of coordination, of coordinations of our doings in whatever we do in a conversation together. And Doc, 
can I ask you a question? What? Can I ask you a question? Please. So, besides for understanding one of your books or approving in one of your lessons in university, what what is it? What is important of understanding this understanding? Well, understanding you understand. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> understand you understand. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but uh, to put it in another way, like what value could we get of reflecting and understanding about this? I suppose that our world of doings expands. Mm. Because, for example, suppose that uh, you are doing something at home, preparing food or something, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. You say, oh, it changed the taste with what I did, and your cooking begins to change. <laughs> I added this in this moment. I have used this in another situation, but now I add this in this particular moment. And so you are doing changes. Our world as human living is coordinations of doings. Language is a coordination of doings. Yes, coordination of feeling, but doings. Coordination of sensation, which appear in doings. Coordination of desires, which appear in doing. So, with what, for example, chemistry is a recursion on cooking. <laughs> Chemistry is a recursion of cooking. You begin to ask yourself about what is happening with that which you are doing in cooking. And you'd end up with chemistry. New world. Because the coordination now have a different orientation, but are coordinations of doings. Yes that can create an alchemy of flavors. <clears throat> flavors, you can really follow the path of flavors, of the path of uh, appearances, mm. the path of um, whatever variation. Mm. What is philosophy? It's abstraction, oh, it's doing. Mm. Doing the domain in which you choose, about what you choose. Mm -hmm. The human life is a world and transforming world of coordinations of coordinations of doings. Mm -hmm. Language being abstract, yes, we can treat as abstract, but in that we have changed the domain of coordinations of our doings. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you, Doc. So I wanted to to now uh, invite Dennis to enlighten us with his response to a question that I have for him, which is on his experience, what has been the transformation that you have lived or the expansions of understanding, as the Doc mentioned, through cultural biology? And if Dennis, if you could uh, sh uh, share us your thoughts about that question while uh, I also invite others to share with me on the chat the questions that you may have so after Dennis reply we can go and ask the dog a few of those questions. Dennis okay. sounds good? Sounds great. Awesome. Yeah thank you Sebe. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I pick up where um, where the doctor was um, explaining the abstractions we create. 
and I want to share what happened to me just through um, understanding cultural biology arising through conversations we had, readings that we share, and my daily living. And I, I remember uh, speaking uh, to someone about this, about what cultural biology has brought about for me that is so really beautiful. It, it, so, um, it was so liberating for me. And he, he asked for, um, uh, for why I felt this. Why are you feeling that cultural biology meant so much to you? And I told him, for example, if I were to help an organization, I might tell the organization that uh -huh, you need to understand emotional intelligence. This is this great theory that has come out and it will help you if you understand this theory. Um, but when I would come home and not listen to something my sweetheart was saying to me. And because I'm not listening, I start to feel her frustration. I realize I never said, oh, dear Anastasia, you need emotional intelligence. Go read the book and then come back to me. And so I was living in two worlds. I was living in this world of abstraction of these theories that seem to have value. But then what was interesting to me is when I come to talk with the people that I care about the most, these abstractions and theories disappeared. And this is, um, this is something that was very, very moving for me and came through a reflection upon cultural biology as I was understanding it and my daily living and the realization that I only live one life. <laughs> and when I'm living that one life, understanding that is important to me may not be important to the person I'm listening to. And this was one of the greatest things that happened to me. In my relationship, I realized understanding is not a comment that I can make. Because if I'm listening to my sweetheart or my grandson or anyone else, Understanding is what they say about my listening. It's how they feel after I've listened to them. And I, I would never have understood that without the work of matristic and cultural biology, because there was another theory that was dominating my life of logic, of analysis, of creating uh, guides and models and things that I thought had value, but it obviously did not have value because I would not do this with the people I love the most. And the cultural biology understanding is an understanding that uh, the doctor and Jimena bring forward in their uh, just original beautiful work but also I see it every day in my daily living. And so there's no separation. I don't need to lead two lives. I can just be um, more and more tranquil or slow or quiet and enjoying the one life I live. It's a wonderful, wonderful gift. Yeah. Thank you, Dennis. Beautiful uh, reflection. One of the 
problems that we have generally is thinking that understanding something refers to the thing. Is something that I can say about an entity. But what you find, it, I would say, in cultural biology is that it is not about the thing. Understanding is about yourself. It's to do with what you are doing. Oh, I understand this. It's not a reference to the nature of that which I say I understand, but the nature of my doings in relation to that which I say I understand. One of the things central in cultural biology is the realization that language does not refer to ideas, to concepts as entities. Language is coordinations of coordinations of doings in different domains. If somebody tells me some of his or her concerns, when will this person say that I understood her? When she sees that I'm doing things that are adequate to her feelings, mm. not to a thing, to the coordinations of our doings together. Mm. Because what would change is the domain in which we are together. Exactly. And Doc, mm -hmm. excuse me, I just received a question that I think goes perfect with what you're mentioning now. Uh, because Anne-Marie was sharing with me that this has gotten her to reflect on the importance of people remembering what it means to be human. Why do you believe, doctor, this is so important in today's living for all of us to remember what it means to be human? I think it's important because we are in a present development on uh, artificial things, robotics, uh, inventing procedures or things that replace us. For example, there is a propaganda in which somebody is being transformed his bodyhood with things add and so that he can open the door with uh, thinking about opening the door but without opening the door with his hands. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if I open the door thinking about the opening the door, I leave a different world than that in which I opened the door with using my hand. Mm -hmm. I have treated opening the door not as an action, but a thing, the machinery of opening the door. But when I open the door, I'm an opening the door, feeling something about the place where I'm going to enter. It's not just opening the door. Mm. It's coordinating our living. For example, like I say, my dear friend, I have opened the door of my heart to you, for <laughs> example. And, and so this is this understanding of the cultural biology is an understanding of the kind of beings that we are and what we would lose if we were to transform ourselves in robots. At least this is a, for me an interesting question. Mm -hmm. Doc, 
Yes, and, and also that relates to what Katie uh, up questioned, but what was uh, brought by Anne by asking, how can we create opportunities for our communities to deepen our humanity in this time? And I believe, Katie, that one fundamental element that we go through in understanding cultural biology is distinguishing that all knowing is a doing. That is also kind of the core invitation that the tree of knowledge makes as a book. Even though it was a book that on my first time reading, it was kind of scary and I put it on the fridge a little bit because I felt a little dumb. But after reviewing it and continue sharing reflections and conversations around it, it's bringing down this distinction this acknowledgement that all that we know are the things that we do is all part of our experience as observers we only know what we know and that we do bring that into awareness when we reflect when we enter in conversations but a crucial aspect that also shows us cultural biology is that phenomenon like listening communication uh, having a common purpose, all of them are cultural biological facts in which the fact that we are a autopo molecular autopoietic system who are structurally determined as organisms that do not distinguish between illusion and perception in our daily living, we cannot claim that things are independent of what we do we cannot claim and pretend to access an external reality because we all people live a different living because of our history, because of our drift. So by understanding these core principles and these core questions that cultural biology invites us to see, we can understand how the phenomenon of listening occurs as a cultural, cultural biological phenomenon we can understand that there is no information theory because everyone listens from the way, from the position in which they are. They, they are. So this provides us with elements that allow us to enhance and broaden our view, our perspective, the way in which we see and understand the world. And when we say see, we do not only refer to see as the action or the uh, as seeing, but that seeing is also listening, feeling, is all of our sensoriality involved and is understanding how that phenomenon happens by acknowledging this basic condition of existence of us human beings, which were those conditions that I mentioned earlier. We are molecular autopoietic beings determined in their structure. There is no external reality, but only changes of states of this organism. So what we know about listening, about the nervous system, and all that is transformed in this epistemological shift. So we understand listening from a different perspective, and we can bring it forth. Maybe I extended myself too much, Doc. What do you think? Uh, no, I'm very much interested in what you are saying. Oh. Because you are, yeah, because you are referring to, to the fundamental uh, situation. People writing uh, uh, novels or stories of uh, scientific story of robotic uh -huh. is, there is a one of these uh, pictures about uh, robots mm -hmm. uh, somebody designs this and one robot in that film in that story uh -huh ask about when was his beginning? Uh, 
is discover that he, if he did not, the robot, mm -hmm. did not know his beginning, then he did not have a personal history. Mm. Human beings have personal histories. Mm. Because we know our beginnings, we are born from another. Mm. But that beginning, is open. Mm. What will happen from that initial situation, uh, the baby born, what will happen in the individual history of this baby will depend on the circumstance of his living, yes, mm. but it's individual. Mm. It's different from every other one. <laughs> so this is one of the Things of human beings that we do not realize, but we like. We are not predictable. Yes, and doctor, I'm I'm kind of confused. I don't know if you have been reading too much Ray Kurzweil or you have been watching too much Robocop, but you are really into artificial intelligence and robots these days. <laughs> no, 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 it's too much. But, uh, <laughs> I want to understand where mm. do that uh, is working with robotics yeah. wants to go. This mm -hmm. is what, for example, now there is a Japanese uh, engineer, or I don't know how to call it, that, that is making robots. Mm -hmm. This I saw in the news. Very beautiful robots with great abilities to do. Mm. I asked myself, because he says, and soon these robots will replace to us or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I said, what, what moved this person? Mm. Mm. To be because it is made mm. like the mm. what is or is the vanity of being the creator that one is not good because many robot stories and movies have finished in tragedy out of vanity of human beings uh, but doctor I wanted to ask you a, a last question of the ones that we received from people here and after your reply we're going to give a huge nice uh, information today right Denise that's right yes so doctor the question is the following um, is the human ability to choose what we choose parallel to the human ability to choose which thoughts we act upon or allowed to pass by? Is there a layer of choice that precedes that action? What is peculiar in human is history. Mm -hmm. Plasticity. Mm -hmm. If you are driving a car, mm -hmm. automatically, mm -hmm. But if you look to the oldest automatic car, the first ones, mm -hmm. they are very, because the only thing that they have to do is to sense the particular difficulty in, in the dynamic of the engine to mm -hmm. change. Mm -hmm. have a sensor that tells that uh, the resistance of the moving of the car because there is a slope mm -hmm. increase, then it changes the gear. Mm -hmm. This is what will go from third to, uh, to second or even to first according mm -hmm. to the 
inclination of the slope of the road. And this you can imitate. Mm -hmm. and, well, is that a reflection? Well, yes, of course. It's a reflection. Mm -hmm. You could add another sense of reality in the car, which uh, not only tells you about the, the, the change in relation to the system of the road according to the slope, but there are other sensors that have to do with other circumstances of the environment, which would modulate in the car automatically what it does with the censoring of the persistence of the slope. Mm. Well, then you have a, a recursion, you have a reflection, you have a reflection to the car. The car is, mm. is effective. But what is peculiar is the sign. Mm. Well, but it doesn't change. No, you design it with the with as little capacity to change what you specify mm. so that it can do uh, and operate in a very well defined situation. Mm. But we, if you are driving and you are talking and you are thinking and you, are, you have many things that will act on your sensoriality and your to think what you do if you are drive, driving at the moment. Mm. Okay. Mm. But this is one thing that is human. And you can do reflections and reflection and reflection indefinitely. And each reflection puts you in a different operational domain, in a different domain of doings. So you are doing, you are reflecting and changing your doings according to the doings that you want to do. Very well. Okay, can you imitate this in a robot? Yes, you can do. But uh, it's the sign. What does the sign you want? What moved the designer to design that Things that we replace your doings instead of do driving to a car, you, you, you have the car driving itself according to certain instructions or specification of the structural dynamics yeah, that you specify. And you will want to lose that. Well, in the only way which we may not lose that is existing in a domain of construction that is not always perfect, not always the same. If you are fa fabricating robots, you can make it all of them the same. Because we human beings, the others <laughs> of the family are not the same. Huh? Are different. The same father, the same mother, yet they are different. Different starting points of history and different encounters and so on and so forth. So what do we want? What moves me to invent new, more complex, automatic robots? Vanity? Ah, yeah, I decided it. It is it's curious because it's, uh, this problem with vanity is appearing even in the, in the Bible. Mm. Doctor Sebastian, can I can I come in with a question? Yes. So what, what 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 I will do is first congratulate the doc for his mastery on replying to, to a question and at the same time putting the topic that he wishes to reflect about. So, doctor, that it's a capacity that I've only seen in you mastering like no one. And now I will give the space to Joran to mm -hmm. ask the, the, the last question for this mm -hmm. meeting. But just a heads up, we will be inviting all of you to participate of these meetings that we will have 
all Wednesdays during March and April. So please oh, be yeah. aware, we will be inviting you for all of you to participate. And I will also add another beautiful surprise at the end. So Joran, mm -hmm. the stage is yours. Well, I'm, I'm not taking the stage, but I'm bad in, write, in bad in writing, you know, the normal way you ask for. But thanks for inviting us. And Dr. Maturana, I, I brought up my notebook from 2001 when we were out in, in Oregon together. And Anne, I see Anne is still here. And Dennis. Uh, and then we were in Stockholm, as you know, 10 years ago and had meetings. So it's just wonderful to remind myself and all these wonderful conversations we've had. John Hollenberg, who is sitting in this group. Why don't you wave, John? That's John. We have been sitting today uh, talking on a subject on uh, transformational change of our societies. If you are engaged in the climate challenge and the sustainability challenge, we, we like to see how, with the question, how can we as a society choose another path and then we are sitting in with the corona experience right now when we are forced to transform. So really our question is, why shouldn't we be able, we doesn't seem to be able as a humanity, as a community, to make choices on the community level, to take us to a future that we think is desirable. Now we are forced to make transformations from the corona. And I would just like you to reflect on that, so to say. We as human beings, as, as communities, seem to be not able really to take choices, but we are forced into some paths. And what can we learn then from what we're going through right now to somehow bring that back to the question of the type of transformation we'd like to be maybe facilitators of? Uh, I think that um, with Jimena, Jimena is here now. Hi. Hi, Jimena. Hi, how are you? Fine. I think that uh, for that to happen, we have to become honestly democratic people. We have to live in democracy. Now, of course. What I'm saying with this, we think that the that democracy is not a political theory. It's a manner of living together, founded on the conservation of honesty, mutual respect, and the disposition to create a common project that is living together in honesty, mutual respect and reflection. Because if we are honest and we respect each other and we are not trapped in a theory or a doctrine, we shall always be able to reflect and ask ourselves whether we want or do not want what we seem to want in what we do. And then it will depend on whether we want to do it together or not. And this is, is the part of this peculiarity of humans that, that we human beings are unique. I will not all, we have to choose living together. We have to choose a common project. And as we have, we have a common project, immediately appear a domain of variability possible for the realization of the common project in the different persons. But we have to be willing to go on doing that in mutual respect. So, <clears throat> We have to conserve the conditions in which we can reflect on what do we do. We are not trapped in theories or fundamentalism, and we can change our choices if we talking together, we find that is not what we want to do together. 
uh, in a world of robots, you can avoid all that because you can specify. So if we want to be human beings, we have to accept this, this curious, curious situation in which we are different, we are not predictable, but we can choose doing things together because we respect each other and we are honest in this choice. That would be my general answer. So in, in, in that sense, uh, it's interesting to see uh, that it's so up to us because this that you're saying, Doc, it reminds me to the main question that is being asked in sociology, for example, for all of its history. It is a discipline that studies social change, social transformation, but its question come, does it change through agency or does it change through the structures of, of society? But in the end, it's always what we human beings do and we human beings are so marvelously capable and responsible, responsible for making such decisions. Just an example that I want to give is, you all know what is happening with Corona, but it's not hard to see the huge implications it has had to our environment, the fact that we are closed down in our homes and not moving in transportation and not the pollution in Italy, the pollution in China, it has dropped to levels that we had never expected. I believe that for the climate emergency, we are providing an answer just by staying at home, reflecting on how we are living together, we are making critical transformations to the measurements of air pollution, of CO2 emissions, and all these dangerous components to our atmosphere. So we have the answers in front of us. The question is, how willing are we to reflect around that and to make the conscious decisions we need to make in order to generate the results and transformation we have ahead of us? And through opening to listening and listening not only with our ears, but listening, seeing, allowing to appear what is in front of us. So just like we have solutions for thirst for thousands of years since the Romans invented the, the transportation of water, the, the distribution, from those times we have a solution to thirst. The question is, are we willing to put the focus and energy into solving those situations? Today we have the solutions at hand for hunger, for many diseases, for what is happening to the environment, we're seeing solutions. Are we willing to put our focus into talking in a democratic manner if we want to conserve elements that generate well-being and value to the biosphere and all who, who lives in there or not? I believe that those questions are important. Oh, yes. uh, These are the essential questions. Mm -hmm. What do we do together, honestly, in mutual respect? Open to reflection, change of opinion, and to correct mistakes. Mm -hmm. This is why the question, what moves me? Mm. What moves this uh, man that has done this beautiful robotic design? Mm -hmm. When I ask, we talk with Jimena, I ask her, did you see vanity? Because this we saw in the television, in, in that um, man, and she said, yes, we both saw vanity. Now, this is not a judgment about the person, maybe it is we are mistaken, there. But it depends on what is moving, what is what we want to obtain with what we do. That's the big question, Doc. Big question. Well, 
so no, doc in that same sense and considering that we have passed 12 minutes from the closing time uh, just as i mentioned to you uh, now i would like to uh, invite you to be aware of our social networks we will also send you by email first an invitation to the next webinar we will have on next Wednesday, and also a special uh, offer for all of the people who, are, who is, has participated in this encounter to join us and accompany us, Dennis, in our next to be launched uh, online training program that will begin in May. So Dennis, I don't know if you'd like to share something about that? Well, I. I would like to um, to share something that may sound mundane, um, but I've realized that uh, this is a conversation I just want to be in. Mm. And I no longer uh, think about, is this a conversation that will lead to money? Is this a conversation that will lead to opportunities? What I've realized is this is just a conversation I want to be in. And with the people that are with us now, it's a conversation that I want to keep on going. Because cultural biology is not a, a logical, theoretic uh, idea. It's a deepen, deepening understanding of who we are alone and together. And the most beautiful thing that I have found in the course on cultural biology is as we deepen our understanding of the work of Jimena and uh, the doctor, we deepen our understanding of ourselves and each other. And I know that there's someone on this call um, who is caring for others in my community. But maybe that was a conversation that I did not want to be in before because it seemed like a trivial act, mm. a charitable act. Mm. But in this domain of cultural biology, now I see that that action of caring for others in the community is at this moment, the most important action in the community I live. And so by deepening our understanding of a cultural biology through the course in May, and by continuing to be in the conversation that we're in now because we want to be together in this conversation of understanding, I, it's never been um, uh, more important to me in my daily living that we are in this conversation. This is the place for us to be, in my opinion. In the coronavirus, where every day we're being reminded of the people that we're missing, of the people we can't embrace, of those that we can't hug, even though we want to, I can't think of a more important time to understand the nature of our humanness and cultural biology. And I really thank everyone <laughs> for being in this conversation and staying in the conversation. Mm -hmm. Thank you very well, much, buddy. Uh, you're welcome. So, Dr. Dennis, we will be ready to now be closing up this conversation and we will be preparing for next week to be able to also count with Jimena on board with us because I will create technologically with her a good way in order to translate the content and to operate as an interpreter. So we will be seeing each other if you wish to continue and stay in this conversation next Wednesday at the same time. So also we will send you, a, our dear friend Marcelo will send you an email with the coordinates uh, for the special offering, but also on how to uh, connect next week for the next seminar. We will let you know there when we will publish the new link to connect and to be seeing each other here soon. And if in the meantime, you'd like to send us questions or 
ideas for our next webinar. I will be more than happy that, to review them and to share them with the rest of the team so we can co-create the space of reflection for that occasion. Doctor, you wanted to say something? Oh, that. It's good to have some It would be good that they, those which uh, have been listening send some questions. Oh, yes. Please do send us your questions, send us your thoughts, send everything besides the coronavirus and we'll be continue being friends. Seba? <laughs> yes? Quiero poder decir algo. Okay, so Jimena would like to add something for this end? Cuando nosotros decimos, o sea, un observador distingue democracia cuando distingue. An observer distinguishes democracy when he distinguishes a manner of living in honesty, mutual respect and collaboration. No, no son estas tres dinámicas relacionales en sí. These three relational dynamics are not in themselves. Tenemos que Mirar qué hace posible que la honestidad, el mundo respeto y la colaboración emerjan. We have to look at what makes possible for those elements to emerge in our living together. De aquí al otro webinar. So from here to the next webinar. La invitación es. The invitation is. A generar un espacio de autoconciencia. To generate a space of self-awareness. Uh, para mirarme. To look at oneself. Uh, desde, eh, no es que uno eh, sea honesto porque quiera ser honesto. It's not that one is honest, honest because you want to be honest. Lo que tiene que ver con qué es lo que uno quiere conservar y qué es lo que uno ha conservado <laughs> y tiene que mirar la historia. It has to do with what one has conserved now and what has conserved in its history. Por lo tanto, en este espacio de autoconciencia, so in this space of self-awareness, voy a surgir en el mutuo respeto, voy a surgir en la honestidad. I will surgir. arise in mutual respect, I will arise in uh, honesty. Porque me voy a dejar aparecer y voy a dejar aparecer al otro. Because I will let myself appear, and I will the other, and I will let the other one appear as well. Solo si he mirado mis errores. Only if I have looked at my own mistakes. Because when one listens honesty and mutual respect, ¿Cómo se hace eso? how do you do that? I have been, I, I have. I've always been honest, I have always respected others. No es que sea siempre, es un modo de vida. It's not that it's always, it's a manner of living. Eso es todo. That's all. Well, thank you, Jimena, very much. Thank you all for sticking around and participating. Marcelo will be sending you out the email quite soon, if not already done. So I hope to see you and catch you all next Wednesday. So, huge hug to all of you. Bye, Doctor. Bye, Jimena. Bye, Dennis. Bye. Bye, Dennis. 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 Bye, Dennis.